Hi everyone, welcome to Podcasters U, intro to podcast editing. I'm Alana Milner, a senior producer at Pinna, the audio streaming service for kids. In my job as a podcast producer, I do many different things. I assemble production teams, review scripts, direct voiceover recordings, and more. But one of my favorite parts of my job is editing audio. So today I'm going to teach you the basics of editing audio so that you can edit audio for your own podcast too. Now we're going to start by opening up a program called Audacity. Audacity is a free multi-track audio editing and recording software that you can easily download online. Once Audacity is open, we're going to immediately go to File, Save Project, Save Project As. Then we're going to give our project a name. I'm going to call mine Intro to Podcast Editing. Then we select where you want to save it and click Save. And remember, it's always a good idea to save your work as you go repeatedly so that you don't lose any of the hard work that you do. Great, so now that we have our project named and saved, we're going to import the audio that we're going to use during the session. For the purposes of this tutorial, I have already prepared some audio clips that I'll be using. The ones that I've chosen are from a season two episode of Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest, one of the podcasts that I produce for Pinna. For fans of the show, you might recognize that this audio is from the episode called Donkey Lettuce. If you haven't recorded any of your own audio yet, you can always use audio clips from the Podcasters U audio toolkit, which you can find at pinna.fm slash podcasters U. That's podcasters plus the letter U. So to import your audio, we're going to go to File, then Import, then Audio, and we're going to select all of the audio files that we would like to bring into the project. Since I prepared mine already, you can see them here, and I'm going to start just by bringing in these two audio files because those are the two that I would like us to look at first. I'm going to click open and voila. As you can see, Audacity automatically creates a separate layer for each audio file. Here's the first layer. Here's the second layer for the two files that I imported. And these layers are known as tracks. The great thing about having separate tracks in a session is that it allows you to isolate and work on each individual piece of audio without affecting the other tracks. It also allows you to isolate and listen to each piece of audio. So to give you an example of that, I'm gonna to go to this button over here, solo, click it. I'm gonna line up my cursor just before this little waveform here. That's what we call these, um, these forms that look like waves uh, in our pieces of audio. I'm gonna click so that my cursor tells the audio where to begin playing from. Then I'm gonna press the space bar, which for me is play. Great, so now we've heard the first cloak sound, which is a, a kind of a cloth movement sound effect. If I wanna hear my second track, I can also isolate that one. If I go over here to solo, line up my cursor, press play, and we hear the second sound effect. What's also great about having your audio in separate tracks or layers is that it allows you to layer them. So if I want to play both of my sound effects at the same time, I simply make sure that their waveforms are aligned, then none of them are on mute or solo, and place my cursor, and let's listen back. Pretty cool, right? Good to hear both of them at the same time. Now, when working with multiple tracks, for example, you can see I have two here, but in a podcast edit, you might end up with a dozen or 20 or even more. Um, so with all those tracks, it can be really important to name them so that you don't get confused about which is which. Prior to importing my tracks, I already named mine, as you can see, Cloak 1, Cloak 2. But if you ever import tracks and need to name them in the session, you can always go over to this little area here click the down arrow and click name and you can rename your track there. Since I already named mine before we began the tutorial, I'm gonna leave them as they are. 
Great. So now that we're familiar with creating tracks, muting them or putting them on solo and layering them, we're going to take a look at cutting and pasting, which is exactly what it sounds like, cutting out bits of an audio clip and pasting them somewhere else in the session. This is a great skill to have when editing. So we're going to use a pretty easy example here, which is, again, uh, our first cloak sound effect. And the way that you're going to select it is to simply click and drag so that it's highlighted. So now I've selected this bit of audio. Then on my keyboard, I'm going to hit Command C for copy. I'm going to place my cursor where I would like that bit of audio to be pasted and hit Command V. Copy paste. You can do that as many times as you would like. Now if you want to listen back, you can again go to solo so you can listen to just this track. Place your cursor and hit play. Voila! If you want to undo what you've done, as in other programs, you can press Command Z. And that will undo what you've already pasted. If you want to cut something entirely, you can apply the same logic. You simply select the audio that you'd like to cut, and then press Command X. And that will cut the audio. One thing to be careful of uh, is that when you cut the audio, it shifts the audio to the right of it over. Let's watch that again. So my audio is selected. If I cut it, this moves to the left. So that's just something to be aware of when you're cutting audio because if you have audio that comes after it, that might also shift over to the left. Great. So now that we have covered copying and pasting with a sound effect that's pretty simple. Let me import a little bit of dialogue to show you how that copy, paste, edit can come in handy there. So let's go back to File, Import, Audio, and I'm going to bring in the rest of my audio files that I prepared for the session. So we already have Cloak 1 and Cloak 2, but we're going to bring the rest in now. Awesome. Okay, so the track that I would like us to look at next is called Princess, which is some princess dialogue from this episode. I'm going to put it on solo and make the track a little bit bigger so that it's easy for us to see. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, which you can do using this little magnifying glass button. And then I'm going to go over to my audio. Let's see. I want to see it more than anything in the world. Go a little bit further. Made entirely of sparkling red. OK, awesome. This is where I'd like us to listen. There is a mountain called the Garnet Mountain made entirely of sparkling red garnets. Great. So in this bit of audio from the princess, she says, there is a mountain named the Garnet Mountain. Let's say we want to take out that bit where she talks about the name of the mountain. Let's listen again to make sure we know where it is. There is a mountain called the Garnet Mountain made in... Okay, right here. So let's zoom in a little bit more. And the way we're going to pull that bit of audio out is exactly as we were doing in the previous example. We're going to select it. And we're going to Command X, and now it's been pulled out. So let's take a listen without it. There is a mountain made entirely of sparkling red garnets. Pretty cool, right? One tip is to pay close attention to where breaths are when someone is speaking. So as you can hear, there is a mountain made entirely the princess inhales after there is a mountain and that's because I made sure to cut the audio so that there aren't double breaths or no breath there. So let's undo that cut and listen again where that breath comes in. There is a mountain 
called the Garnet Mountain, made entire. So she actually breathes twice, once here and once here. So when I made that cut, I made sure to only leave one of those breaths in. There is a mountain made entirely of... So that it sounds natural. That's just a pro tip when editing audio of people speaking, that you want to make sure to keep it sounding natural by not cutting out too many breaths or not leaving too many breaths in. Let's talk about our next subject, which is fading. I'm going to first take that off solo. And here we're going to go to our music track. I'm going to put that on solo and make it a little bit larger so that we can see it easily. Now, fading is pretty simple. It's basically just having the volume of a sound go from low to high or high to low gradually. So if something were to stop abruptly, like if I were to stop speaking abruptly, <laughs> it's a little jarring, but if I were to go from speaking normally to speaking quietly over a period of time, then it's not as jarring. That's an example just with my voice alone, but we're going to use this music track to show you how it's done uh, in Audacity. So let's start at the beginning of the music track. So from the top, it's already playing at a pretty similar volume to the rest of the track. If we want to fade in a little bit, we pick the point to which we want it to fade in, hit Command I, that separates that first bit from the second bit of the track, select the bit that we want to fade in on, go to Effect, Fade In, and as you can see, the waveform gets smaller over here. but eventually grows to the same size as the rest. So now let's listen with the fade in. Take it one more time from the top. Great, now we have a fade in. Let's go to the end of the music track and see how we can fade out. So this is how it sounds without a fade out. See how it ends pretty abruptly? Let me raise the volume over here so you can hear it a little better. Oop, it just cuts off. Okay, but if I again command I to section off this little piece, select it, click effect, fade out, let's listen again. Nice. That's a much more gradual, less abrasive fade out, uh, which will allow us potentially to then transition into the next scene or moment a little more seamlessly. Now, in addition to adjusting the volume levels using fading, we will also want to adjust the volume levels of our tracks in order to make sure that they're coming together in the way you want them to. When adjusting levels, you can think of yourself like the conductor of an orchestra. If all of the instruments played at the same volume, it would sound a bit chaotic. But if you have the tubas play a bit softer and the flute play a bit louder, then you can hear them both at the same time. So, when editing audio, if you are the conductor, the tracks are your different instruments. For example, I just raised the gain over here on the music track in order for you to be able to hear it a bit more clearly. But now that I've done that, let's take it off solo and listen to how it sounds with the rest of the tracks. When the boy came to play with the princess, he found her staring out the window, looking sad. He said, Why are you so sad? To my ear, the music now sounds a little bit loud, at least in comparison to the narrator and the sound effects. It makes it hard to hear those other things as well. So, in order to adjust that, I'm going to go back over here and bring the gain back down to zero, where I had it initially. Let's see how it sounds now. The next day, when the boy came to play with the princess, he found her staring out the window, looking sad. Ah, 
much better. Now you can hear the music and the narrator and the sound effects and none of them is overpowering the other. To show you how I can use this on another track, let's say we want to hear these footsteps a little bit more clearly. Today, when the boy came to play with the princess. Again, you can go over here, raise the gain on them a bit, listen back. The next day, when the boy came to play with the princess, he found her staring. It's a subtle difference, but if your vision is to have louder footsteps, then that's what you need to do to achieve it. So I'm going to bring these back down to zero because that's where I had envisioned them being placed. We're going to listen one more time. Today, when the boy came to play with the princess, he found her staring out the window, looking sad. He said, Awesome. So, now that we have copied and pasted, faded, made sure that all our tracks are layered and arranged just like we would like them to be, it's time for us to share our audio with our audience. This means saving it in a format that you can easily share online. And the best format for podcast sharing is an MP3. So in order to export our audio as an MP3, we're going to go to File, Export, Export as MP3. We're going to make sure that it's being saved under a name that we would like. And we're going to make sure it's being saved to a location where we can find it. Then under Format Options, we're going to select Preset, medium, and joint stereo. Stereo will mean that it will come out of both sides of your headphones, the left and right ear. Then we're going to click save. This edit metadata tags field may pop up for you, in which case you have the option of inputting information here, or you can skip it, which is what I'm going to do now. Next, you'll see a little export box pop up that shows you its progress. If you have a longer piece of audio, it might appear for a bit longer, but because this bit of audio is so short, it just popped up and then disappeared. And then I'm gonna go to where I saved it to check and see if it's there. And there it is, our MP3. And those are the basics of podcast editing. Now that you know how to layer, cut, paste, fade, adjust your levels, and export your audio, the next step is sharing your podcast with an audience. We at Pinna always love hearing the shows you create. If you'd like to share your podcast with us, ask an adult to head over to pinna.fm slash podcasters you. That's podcasters plus the letter U. There you'll find instructions for how to share your audio with Pinna. Plus, you can access the full Podcasters U podcast, planning docs, helpful links and tips, the Pinna Audio Toolkit, and everything else you need to get your podcast project rolling. Thanks for joining me for this Podcasters U intro to podcast editing tutorial. And remember to listen closely, think creatively, and have as much fun as possible while creating your own podcast. <laughs>